So if you have to deal with data that's somewhat inconsistent, like you have blanks and nulls and you're trying to figure out how to filter that information, you're going to want to watch this video. So hey, this is Chris from Essential SQL. And today I want to introduce to you a function that's kind of esoteric. It's different. It's weird. You don't use it all the time, but when you do need to use it, it's very handy and it makes your SQL very compact and the function is called null if. So let's set up the scenario and then I'm going to walk you through one case where I find using null if very useful. So let's assume that I have some data here where I have a middle name and I have a middle name where I have blanks like here with Sam and has them and then I also have maybe missing data where it's null. And what I want to be able to do is filter out those folks that have either a null or a blank, okay? So I wanted to come up with a handy, compact way of doing that. Because you can imagine as your queries get really large, um, being able to have things succinct and compact makes it easier to read your queries. So before we go on, just you know, notice that what I've done here is I've kind of wrapped everything in a transaction because the database, the VentureWorks database doesn't really give you a good way to um, show this example, so I kind of manufactured some data. Um, I, I just basically changed uh, some of the names to blank, and I wrapped it in a transaction because that way, when I'm done with the example, it goes back to its original state. So, for instance, if I just run this select right here, you can see that Hasm and Sam are now have values in it. So that's the idea. So when I run it again, you'll see they have blanks. So we're going to run everything inside here where the good stuff happens. And that's where it'll be like our little test lab. So let's introduce null if, and then I'm going to show you some other ways that you could do this using SQL because there's always more than one way to kind of in a sense per se um, get through these examples. So I'm going to um, copy in, same statement, but now what we've done is we've added a where clause and we got this funky thing called null if in here. And you're like, it's like, I don't know, when I first look at this, I'm like, what? You know, I got null if and I got null. It's like, what are we trying to do here? So let me, let me explain what's going on. And then I think you and I together will be a lot more clear on this. So what's happening here is, is that we're going to look at the middle name column. All right. And if the middle name is blank, like has them in Samar, then we're going to set these column values to null. So basically, it's doing exactly what the function says. Make it null if this condition holds. And the condition's an equality. So make it null if middle name equals blank. That's what that's saying right here. Make it null if middle name equals blank. That maybe it's a good way to remember that. And so now that I have that as um, null for my blanks, the cool thing is <clears throat> I have all my missing values kind of on a, you know even playing ground. And to pull them out of the database, all I have to do is compare them to null. So the records that are uh, for Kim, and then the ones that are blank for Hasm and Sam will all surface because through the magic of the null if um, function and just inherently having the value, it's not a value, having null, they will show. So let's try this. So, you know, here we have our results and you may be going, well, wait a minute, I don't see where it has them in SAM or null. Well, that's true because the null if is only operating on the column when it's, as it uh, um, applies to the where condition, not in the select. So we're not displaying a modified result as a result of the function, only using it when we do the compare. So let me show you an equivalent way of doing this using um, like a case statement. So I'm going to put these two things side by side for a second. And, uh, oop, I forgot my select statement. So let's just bring this into, it's important. And maybe this will be, this is kind of strung out. So let's do, 
when um, so this will make make this a little better to read because it's kind of buried. So this case statement here is like this. All right, so okay, now I can maybe explain this to you, and you'll be able to read it a little better. So I think we now understand how null if works. I'm getting, I'm gonna change middle name to null if it's blank. In this case here, what we're saying is, is if the middle name is blank, then make it null. Otherwise, just leave it alone. And then this case expression uh, value that gets returned will be tested against null. And that is what we'll then use to do our filtering. So let me comment this one out right here. And let's run it now on the case statement so you guys can see how that works. And you can see it comes back with the same result. And because we can do one last type, let me show you how this can be done with an inline if, which will work in SQL Server, but not necessarily in the data warehouse. I think inline ifs aren't available there yet. So probably 90% of you folks could use this. But really what's happening here is this is saying uh, if middle name equals blank, then make it a null. Otherwise, just set the value to the middle name and then test against null. And when I run that, I get the same result. So let's compare a couple of these and talk about real quickly why null if is cool. So one reason that I like this is that when you're working with just testing values and you get comfortable with it, this becomes a very compact form. So if you know you're always dealing with like blanks and nulls, then this becomes a compact test, right? This is much more compact than having to write this out, right? So I have just one statement. Less, there's less errors to make. You know, I'm only specifying my column once as, as opposed to twice. Less characters to type in and just less, you know, chances to goof it up. And likewise with the uh, inline if, it's the same thing. Where it's just less chance to make a, a boo-boo along the way. Uh, and uh, to be honest, again, the code's a little more robust. This is a little more compact than the case statement, but in my opinion, it might be a little more harder to read. I don't know, I find this sometimes harder to read than even a case statement. I'm so used to reading case statements. I work in the data warehouse, and that's all we use there, that I can read these much easier than in line if, even though I know this is test, then, else. Um, for some reason, this is just a little tougher, especially if they get nested. Anyways, point is, is that I think when you're just trying to do a simple comparison where you're looking at null values and uh, blanks, that this is a super pattern to use to do that comparison. So hopefully you found this to be a really good tip and subscribe to my channel because I have other good tips and I will be showing you more good tips in the future and I'd appreciate that. So have a great day. Take care. Bye.